Hi, uh, this is Dawn and I'm mapping in Gale Crater and I thought I'd actually do a screen scap capture and share that with you. So right now I'm zooming out. So we're looking at part of the mound. Uh, this is sort of on the west side of the mound and there's some very irregular beds here. Uh, so I started mapping those and the scale bar here is 20 meters and the contour interval is 10 meters. So one of the first things I noticed is that when you start playing with the light levels you can see that the um, topography in this area uh, is pretty poorly constrained so with this low angle of illumination you can see uh, a lot of polygonal shapes that are clearly uh, not natural so um, that uh, suggests to me I need to be careful when interpreting the uh, relationship of some of the bedding to the topography. So you can see, for example, the topographic contour here is going, going up and over. So with that caveat, I've decided that I'm actually going to do the mapping uh, without the contour lines, and we're sort of going to ignore a lot of the, the uh, topography right now. Uh, I should also say that I'm using ScreenFlow to uh, capture the video and that significantly uh, slows down the response time of uh, Cresta, the program I'm using. So um, when Tony programmed it, saw my videos, he goes, the response time is really low, I should do something about that. But it's actually the, the screen uh, capture system. So what I'm mapping now is an albedo change. Uh, and a couple of beds, between a couple of beds, and um, the blue that shows up is uh, spectral reflectance that comes uh, from Cresta and helps visualize things. So I'm trying to decide where this bed should go. You can see another light bed below it, and it sort of uh, splits into two uh, lighter areas right here. So I'm going to say that this bed probably uh, extends around in here. Then when I get to to this area, I really don't see much bedding, so I'm not actually going to map that. And I'm not so sure about these points, so I think I'll delete those two points there. Okay, so we will leave that as one of the beds. And so I'm going to map this lighter bed um, that goes uh, below it here. And to do that, I'm actually just pressing a key on the keyboard when the cursor is over the point I want to add another, over the spot I want to add another point. So it's actually um, extremely easy to do this, this sort of work, almost, almost too easy. No, I don't mean that at all. It's fantastic. Okay, so I'm not sure where that bed continues here. So we'll delete that one. I didn't put in quite enough points in this area here. So maybe I will reselect that line and move the adjust the points a little bit. So it's a little rounder. I'm not sure about the positioning of that last one anyway. Okay, so now one of the things I'm interested in this area is the um, fact that the bedding appears not to be you know, particularly planar. It seems like it has uh, some variable dips. I was quite sure of that earlier, but now that I know that the topography in this area is less well constrained, I'm uh, less confident in my interpretation uh, that the bedding is, is truly irregular. Although this is uh, the only area where um, I've been seeing this sort of exposure. And I don't think that that's, it's just a coincidence. Okay, so now I have to decide if 
the bed that I'm mapping continues here. So I think I'm going to get rid of these last couple points and look at it again. again. Okay, so there's definitely a light point that comes in here and it must actually extend through here and is probably part of this light bed, but I'm not sure. So we'll put a point there and there. Then I think I'll start mapping uh, this zone here. So one of the really nice things about this programs and other programs where you can uh, manipulate the data in real time is that it really promotes actually trying to put lines on a map in this case or in some of my other work it promotes um, making measurements and that when you have to do that it really focuses your observations so now what I'm wondering here is I was tracing along what I thought was a fairly uh, distinctive bed. There's a lighter one below it. Um, but it looks like there are a couple of fractures in here and I'm not sure whether this fracture actually represents, or this dark spot represents um, a uh, fracture or bed. So I'm actually going to stop, start a new line over here. So I'd rather be a little overly conservative uh, in my interpretations. Okay, so now we have a couple of other questions. So here, up in the top, I mapped there's going across this scarp. And that scarp is definitely not layering here, but it certainly looks more like layering as we go down um, into this area. And it continues, and then you have what looks like a different layer coming out here and things going on here. So I don't really know what's going on there in terms of what's layering and what represents other processes. So I think I will uh, not map that for now, maybe move up to this area to do a little bit more mapping. Okay. I'm going to capture this sort of swirling set of probable beds. Okay, so let's capture the general geometry over here. So I think I'll fill in a little bit here and then we'll move up to the other side. And then that's probably uh, more than anyone actually wants to watch. Okay. So it looks like that layer might be truncated. Um, I can delete that last point. Okay, so this is the basic idea of mapping, and I clearly have a lot more to do. And uh, so, thanks for watching.